Hey everybody, Chris Bober here, and welcome back to the Bober Academy Football Podcast, which of course is brought to you by the Bober Academy, where our mission is to train and develop superior offensive linemen to dominate on the gridiron. So wherever you're watching this, if you'll just give us do us a favor, if you're listening to this on a podcast, just go ahead and subscribe to, to this podcast so you get notified every time we drop a new video. And also, if you're seeing this anywhere on social media, please feel please like it, subscribe to it, follow, share. Um, whatever the medium requires, we'd love for you to follow us and keep up to date on what's going on. So um, we are continuing our building alignment series. And our, my, one of the things I thought would be kind of cool is to really start from scratch and build, talk about how the offensive lineman body, body works, how it applies to football and being an athlete in general. We, last month, we started out with the foot in our relationship to the foot. Um, we had Nolan on here, like like today, we talked about how the foot works and how, how strength is derived from having your feet on the ground. Then I showed you some drills in your socks, really focusing on keeping your feet on the ground. And of course we had Justin from one gym come in and talk about some exercises to really maximize that power efficiency and keep on track. Um, so we are beyond blessed today to be joined Again, by Nolan Clausen. He's the co-owner and proprietor at Midwest Movement. One of the best movement specialists is anywhere, but for anyone in the Elkhorn area, Omaha area, come out and see Nolan, um, and he'll get you back on the field, the court, whatever you need. He does such a great job. Nolan, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, we're looking forward to this. I, I've got a lot of great um, feedback from last month talking about the feet. Just a lot of stuff people didn't know. Um, now we're going to move up the body a little bit. And we're going to talk about the knee. And, you know, everyone talks about knee injuries and it's always such a big thing. But I think what we'll learn today is the knee is actually pretty simple. And there's some things we can do to keep our, our knees more healthy. But why don't you start by telling us kind of how the knee works and how it applies to um, athletics, especially football. Right. So um, whenever we talk about the, the body, um, we talk about joints um, and how we go from a mobile joint to a stable joint to a mobile joint. Our body does that um, throughout. So I got my little handy skeleton right here. And so we talked about the ankle and the foot last week, um, but the ankle is a very mobile joint. It's uh, supposed to have a lot of mobility, whereas the knee really only just goes in one direction, bends forward, just like in a squat. There's not a whole lot of side to side movement. And then if we go up to the hip, it's a ball and socket joint. So we get a lot of motion, right? So uh, rarely is a knee pain or knee injury uh, a result of something going on in the knee, but more uh, as a result of either an ankle problem or a hip problem. Um, so talking about the feet last week, if you haven't seen that video, go back and listen to that. Uh, because that is the, uh, the missing link or uh, where you should really start in preparing your knees. So uh, we always say like the, the knee is this uh, monkey in the middle, a joint in the middle that um, if it's not on the right track or if we think about it as a, a train on the track, the ankle and the hip, if they're in the right uh place, then that train is going to um, stay on track and we're not going to have a lot of problems. So uh, basically, we also say that it is the connection from the ground or our ankles or our feet, the power transferring energy into our big muscles, such as our glutes that are around our hip and being able to use those glutes right um, or those big muscles right. So. Uh, we were kind of talking a little bit before, but if we are going to step and we get our foot or our ankles in the right position, that knee is basically going to follow there. And then the hip muscles are what is going to control that knee from either not going in the wrong position or staying stable so that the, the force transfers through the hip. Um, so uh there's not a whole lot to talk about with the knee but what i like to talk about is focusing on knee position when we're doing things such as squats or lunges um if we keep when we're working out if we're doing lunges and we're not seeing 
Um, so we're going to kind of point this down. But when we go to do a lunge and we step out, if we're seeing that knee cave in and we're just like going through the motions and just letting those knees dive everywhere, then basically we're training bad habits. We're training bad tracks for that knee to, uh, to uh, control. So when we do lunges in the weight room and things like that, we want to make sure that the knee is transferring straight over that ankle. We're not getting any diving in. We're not getting anything out to the side, but it's just tracking straight over that ankle. There's also uh, a pretty common misconception um, or scare out there that we shouldn't put our knees over our toes um, when we squat. Um, and we're kind of deniers of that knees over toes being a bad thing because uh, it happens. It happens in sport all the time. And if you're training in the weight room, um, doesn't reflect what's going on in sports, then basically you're not going to be prepared for that movement when it happens in that sport. So uh, we're okay with when we do lunges and things like that, being able to get that knee out in front, we're tracking it correctly, but then being able to let it go over our toes and then being able to use that connection um, between the ankle and the hip with the knee being in the right position. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny when when football when it comes into football, the knee is so important and I use it as so much as a guideline. In in our clinics this week with the high school and college kids, I really had them focus on knee position. And one of the big things that offensive linemen get graded on is whether or not they're knee benders. Right. Yeah. And what that tells me, and I remember my coach Dick Vermeil, we talked about it last time. He always looked at ankle flexion. Can your ankles flex enough so that your knee can properly function and keep your feet on the ground? That, that's like the number one. If you didn't have ankle, ankle flexion, he would just move on to the next guy. So when I'm doing my, our drills, and then of course I'm going to follow up next week with some drills focusing on the knee. What I really focus in on is, of course, bending your knee so you have access to your power. But another really big thing is to keep your knees pointed where you're going, right? So if you're doing a zone block and you're stepping to the right, you're putting yourself on like a 45 degree angle, you got to you gotta take your step and that backside knee has to come and, and it has to get on that track with it. And your ankle can allow that even with your foot on the ground. So it's just so – when I focus on these guys on doing it, if, if people lift up on that toe – they break that chain of strength and their hips rise up and then all of a sudden they're playing high. So I, I think it's great. Pass protection, staying square. If your inside knee is pointing straight, you're staying square. There's so much right. to it. But the big thing is, and tell me about this, um, when you go to strike a guy, I always teach guys to strike with a step, whether it's pass pro and they're striking and stepping or it's run blocking, they're striking and driving it through. Tell me about the knees function when like that's such a violent action. Tell me about like, how, how a knee functions and works like that. And, and some of the best practices to try to just focus in on keeping, keeping your body position, right? Um, like we're, we've been saying, basically make sure your feet are in the right direction. Um, and then like we were also saying with lunges and things like that, making sure that your, your, uh, knee is tracking in the right direction. So like you were saying, if your feet are headed in the right direction, make sure your knees are also headed in that right direction. Um, uh, and then it, it's basically that transfer into that power of those glutes and hips. Um, if we can have good hip control, basically we're going to have good knee control. So I guess I, I think that answers your question. Yeah. Uh, kind of. Well, so you deal with obviously helping people rehab from a lot of injuries, but yep. a lot of knee injuries. Um, where do you see the most knee injuries happen? I mean, I feel like it's when the feet and hips get out, out of place. Is that is that true? Or how do you see that happening? You know, so we can tell them how to stay out of um, these, these precarious yeah. situations. Yeah. And uh, you saw that in uh, basically in the national championship, the wide receiver um, that got hurt. I can't remember his name, um, but you saw basically his ACL tear. And the reason was because that knee, um, got out of alignment or the that power zone. It wasn't directly in between the ankle and the hip. It wasn't stacked in between there. Um, so when he landed, uh, when he caught that pass 
he landed like this and his yeah. knee just kept going right there. And that's where the ACL tears. So if we are seeing um, like severe knee injuries, it's basically just because that knee got out of place. Um, he wasn't able because his hips, uh, I don't know how strong his hips were, um, if that would have been preventable, but in my, I, I think in my mind that he could have prevented that if he had stronger hips or the ability to control um, his knee going in there, like mm. his knee can go that way, but if he can't get out of that, mm. um, out of that, you know, poor position, then that's where that injury occurs. Um, and so that's really why it does really matter how strong your hips are um, and how much control you have with your hips. Um, and like we said, we rarely see uh, knee injuries or knee pain, um, things that are actually a result of the knee not working correctly. It's always almost the ankle or the hip above and below just not working in the right um, fashion. Well, let me ask your opinion about this. What, what do you think about like O-Lyman wearing knee braces, right? Because I see, I remember in college, we had to wear knee braces in practice, right. but we didn't have to wear them in games. It's like, does, do you think that helps you, hurts you? What are your thoughts on that? Um, obviously, every situation is a little bit different. Um, say you have a, a slight tear of your ACL or PCL. Um, it's probably going to be a good idea to wear that knee brace. But if you're just wearing a knee brace just for prevention, uh, you're you're basically going to start relying on that knee brace and uh, the muscles. It's just like if you cast your arm, um, if you casted your arm in this position, the muscles that make your arm go this way are going to start to atrophy. Right. Mm. Um, and so then like it's it's very prevalent that college players are wearing knee braces, but now you're seeing in the NFL, they're, they're not, um, mm. a lot of them aren't and they're doing it in college to prevent it. Um, I would hope that most of those teams that are, uh, requiring them to wear those, that they're doing a ton of preventative care and a prevent a ton of, um, rehab and post rehab stuff to make sure that those muscles still get worked enough in the stability of that knee. Um, and th those knees or those knee braces help the knee track in the right direction. But, um, I mean, there's only so much that they can do because after about 15 minutes that Velcro loosens up, <laughs> um, and they slide all over and they, they kind of get out of position too. So. Yeah. Yeah. So my more natural, I think, um, it's like, the coach that, that before them did it and the coach before them did it. So they just said, put your knee braces on. Right. Um, I, I don't think I've ever seen any studies that talk about how much they prevent or anything like that. I, I totally get that. If you put that knee brace on, I remember having to wear them in practice and it got to a certain point where it would actually, you can use the limits of that knee brace to help you stay in position. Well, then you go to the game and you're playing harder and right. all of a sudden that, that, that stopping point isn't there anymore. So it makes total sense. It's like, yeah. it's like you said, it's like shoe coughings for your foot. You know, they don't help you get stronger. They're actually preventing you from, from doing that. And none of my coaches I ever had said, okay, well you're wearing knee braces. So go do some extra exercises. They just said, put them on. Right. Yeah. And when I was in college playing basketball, we had to wear ankle braces or tape our ankles every day for practice, but we had a, uh, a post and a pre uh, practice routine that we had to go through for our ankles. So in that instance, it was okay. Um, but they also show that like when, um, athletes are taping their ankles or bracing their ankles, that it holds the knee or, uh, increases the risk of knee injuries because the ankle isn't allowed to let mm -hmm. the knee move, um, out of different, uh, positions so that it stresses like the ACL or the PCL. Um, and some of those research also say like a taped ankle after 15 minutes of play, um, it's, it's not doing what it was originally when it's taped, it gets so loose and they've applied that to braces too. So um, in my opinion, try to stay out of braces as much as possible. Um, now, if you're rehabbing back from a, an injury, it's a, it's a good idea to have that brace on there 
especially if you start getting into some of your more dynamic or your plyos uh, uh, starting out. But when you're not in that practice or that high risk, it's a, it's a good idea to stay out of those braces so that you can um, kind of build up the little muscles around that knee. So what, what are some examples of a couple of things like pe people could do to like to strengthen? I mean, I would say if the knee is not a muscle, right? There, you right. can strengthen ligaments. But um, if you if you said, hey, listen, I, I'm concerned about my knees or my knees sore, what, what could they do to to just make them feel better, maybe strengthen them so if they have to wear braces at practice, they can be okay? Um, so this is a kind of a, just a general um, little exercise. So if we have a band like attached to a rack and say we are doing lunges, um, we're just going to get that band where it's trying to pull our knee out this way. And we could do lunges like this. So we have to make sure that our knee is not allowed to pull that way. So we do lunges there. And so you're working on some of these muscles that surround here. But then you could also do it the other way. So we switch feet. And now the band is trying to pull your knee in this way. And so you're going to do a lunge like this and it's trying to pull you in, but you got to keep it tracking over your toes. So that's a really good one. Um, another you see very commonly in rehab setting is basically standing on one knee and just doing the star pattern. So making sure that knee tracks over so you can see like right here yeah. there's so you're, you're working this hip actually to keep that knee tracking over the toes. So um, if you can add those things in, that's obviously going to be uh, super beneficial, very preventative, but it's also going to strengthen those hips and the quads um, to make you a little bit more powerful too. Now what about flexibility? What um, Obviously you can't stretch your knee, but like what, what, what type of flexibility do you recommend as, as far as trying to keep your knee, knee healthy? Um, one of the biggest things, um, because our lives we spend with our knees bent because we sit in desk mm -hmm. all day long. We never really get our knees. Or in class. In, what's that? Or in class all day. Yep. And we never get our knee into that full extension, mm -hmm. right? And some people are very, very scared about getting their knee into that hyperextended position because they think they're going to hurt it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you never trained in that range, then if you do get in that range, your body won't know how to control it. So I like to do where we get a band. Um, can you guys see that? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So we get a band right here. And all we're going to do is just train our knee going back just like that. Uh, this is a very, very common exercise that we do with people um, when they have knee pain, honestly, just because if, if you never get into this range, um, your body's craving it basically. So. Yeah. So just put a band on you and straighten your leg out so that you're training it to use that full range of motion there. Huh? Yeah. Nice. And uh, you know, the funny thing is, and we're going to wrap up here in a second, but, um, it seems to me like none of the things you did there really were about the knee. Right. It's always right. about your the flexibility in your foot and staying connected, keeping your um, your hips mobile, um, keeping your your flexibility and all the muscles and joints surrounding your knee. So that that's like the big takeaway here is the knee only has one function to bend and go straight. And you can't really do much to help them. So you really focus in on the joints above and below and the muscles above and below to really maximize knee health. Right. Yep as soon as that knee gets out of that bending and flexing right here, mm -hmm. um, that's where injury occurs. So if you can make sure your muscles don't allow it to get out of or into that range or can control back out of that range, then we're going to be better. Set. Nice, nice, nice. All right. Well, there you have it. Um, of course, thank you so much for Nolan. If you want any more information about what Nolan does, go to MidwestMovementElkhorn.com. I'm going to include links and in wherever you're finding this video, there'll be links to go there. Give Nolan a call. They do such a great job of 
um, amazingly getting guys back to action really, really fast. So um, thank you so much, Nolan. Appreciate it. For As a reminder out there, for those of you who are listening to this on a podcast, just click and subscribe. Um, you can always click the link and reach out to us if you have any questions. Um, if you're seeing this on, on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or wherever, be sure to subscribe to our channel and then get notifications like sh comment, share, do all that you can do. Uh, we do have some great, I got some great clinics going on right now. I got a high school clinic going on and I also have a, a college bound clinic for guys that are seniors that are going on next year. And I'm using all the stuff I'm learning from Nolan and Justin to apply those to my drills. It's amazing. Just that little bit of focus on keeping your knee down or keeping your foot on the ground has made these guys so much better alignment. I'm learning as much from you guys as yeah. I am anything else. So um, thanks so much for, again, Nolan, thank you for joining us. Be sure to uh, subscribe to our channel and we will see you guys next time. Nolan, have a great day, buddy. You too. Thank you.